Hello and welcome back to the Bankers Leadership Series in association with Walters Kluwer discussing recent survey results benchmarking financial institutions data readiness for regulatory reporting and compliance. In chapter two of this five-part series we're going to explore the technology challenges large complex incumbent institutions face when addressing changing regulatory and reporting requirements. So Richard I was going to pose the question to you first. In the survey nearly seven out of ten respondents cited it was the integration of existing and new technologies was really their primary technology challenge and while as you know sort of maintaining existing technology or investing in new technology was much lower from your perspective what are the main uh, technology challenges um, when it comes to regulatory compliance that standard chartered faces firstly it's um, the challenge of, of meeting so many different disparate requirements and they all have differing timelines and that is, is, is um, a particular challenge for, for organisations because we're having to, to set up a multitude of different programmes each designed to uh, cater for specific sets of rules and as a result we, we're not able to think through and implement str strategic solutions. Um, the tendency is, is, is to implement tactical solutions. I suspect that over time we'll get to um, um, bed in these tactical solutions and think much more strategically and, and try and um, have a much more integrated approach going forward. But I, I think it's very much the piecemeal response to the crisis and, and the various approaches um, that we've had to implement. Um, and also thinking through some of the challenges in terms of obtaining data, um, ensuring that data is of an adequate standard um, and consistent, um, consistently used across the organisation. How can they actually try these big incumbents try to knit together these uh, you know, piecemeal solutions? Many of these banks have, as, as, not only have they created one-off solutions, but they've got lots of legacy systems. Legacy systems which often don't talk to each other. A lot of logic is built onto these old systems. And, and banks, are, banks are actually concerned. They, they don't want to touch this because they don't have the full understanding and the systems don't talk to each other. So this is where we are seeing banks invest. You know, many large institutions have spent, are spending a lot of money in, in creating the, you know, the, the, the data lake of sorts. They're trying to put all the information together. And, and, but it's expensive. They, you know, the regulatory meeting rev, regulatory challenges is, has been expensive for banks, so they don't have the budgets or the people or the resources to actually do what they need to do. So they're focusing on the urgent versus the important if you know what I mean. Yeah. And Ruth, for yourself, in terms of the legacy systems, what are the biggest challenges? Again, in the survey, most respondents said it was sort of the inflexible technology support and then the multiplicity of legacy products. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think it's the complexity of the existing old IT infrastructure, which for many reasons uh, delivers what it should deliver. So it's not necessarily it's a bad infrastructure, it's just not nimble enough to kind of adapt to the future requirements. So in a way, we should all take a very bold decision to move to a new tech stack and to slowly migrate data and customers over to that tech stack. Uh, but that is a very big decision to take. And I think we do see a lot of outside pressures from very new technologies that may com be completely immature, that sort of challenge the old world, such as distributed ledgers, um, which in my mind are not necessarily yet ripe to be completely plugged in. But it does give us food for thought of thinking, how do we think about what we have today and how we get to that next level? And I would just echo what was mentioned before, the data challenge itself mm leads us, like many other organizations, to create data lakes, but sometimes these data lakes are not necessarily unstructured data lakes, so we have unstructured data in applications, and the cleansing of that and the awareness of where the data is and what it is, is the first step to create some meaningful intelligence on what the bank is actually doing. And I think there is a long mile for large organizations that have a lot more data and a lot more applications um, to actually walk that road uh, and make sure that the unstructured data is clean accessible and manipulable. For me the key point is the one that Richard made which is the distinction between uh, a tactical response and a strategic response and I think it's important to recognize two things about that. First that there has to be a strategic response both by regulators and by firms 
It's not enough to have a tactical response by one and a strategic response by the other. It has to mirror, if you like, what's going on, because otherwise you get money spent in the wrong places. And I think there's been an awful lot of money spent in the wrong places by large institutions. I think, to me, the solution for institutions is, is simply to step back and quite consciously take a considerably more strategic perspective. And that, I think, is really driven home by the results of this survey, that a lot of institutions are struggling possibly because they've not done that sufficiently or because they've not done that sufficiently early and are now struggling to make the spend at pace in an environment where they're being bombarded by a multitude of uncoordinated regulatory initiatives. So for me, the, the, the path through this is first the one that Ruth suggests, which is there is technology coming down the pipe that will be useful. But I think before that arrives even, firms need to step right back and say, what is our data governance structure? And what does that mean? That doesn't mean that you have somebody sitting in your IT shop that has the title supervisor IT governance. It means that it's got to be the, the data issues and the importance of data and the recognition that major institutions now fundamentally are data managers needs to roll right up the organization to the very top table where people need to understand both the consequences of that and what it means for how they need to address the problem. That's what I don't see occurring. We've recognised some of these challenges um, when we were implementing Basel II, where we realised that data was, was very key and we were building um, large credit data marts, um, warehouses to, to um, source all of the, the loss history that we needed to, to help us build our, our loss models. Um, what we recognised at the time was that there needed to be a, a, a specific uh, governance structure in place to ensure there was adequate uh, accountability and across the, the life cycle of, of, of a data item as it moves through different parts of the organisation. Um, often it, 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 it data gets transformed and passed on to another function and then on to the next and so forth. So it's important to, to ensure there's adequate accountability and checks and balances in place. And progressively, because of the volumes of data that are being generated, those checks and balances need to be automated. They need, they need, they, we can't really rely on the manual validation checks that previously um, we could do. So that, that's something we, 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 we put in place, a group information management governance committee um, that reports into the board risk committee and its responsibility is to ensure that there is an adequate structure and, and, and ownership for data and that it's, it's, a, a, it's being managed in, in an effective manner. Uh, I think that, that's uh, standing us in good stead. Um, but it, it, there is also some other developments in perhaps the reg tech world which, which are, are interesting. I've seen the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK recently um, undertaking a consultation that, that's out currently um, to, uh, its, its ambition is to take a machine readable code and to provide that to banks so that um, that code will be able to in, interrogate bank systems. Um, but before it can do that in an effective manner, we need to know, ensure that, that, that the bank's data and their infrastructure is capable to, 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 to work with that, um, those instructions. So I would say, um, to the point, data lineage is a key um, challenge and a key opportunity, because once we establish data lineage, we actually find a lot more economic intelligence throughout what the data does in our organization across the different business silos. Um, and complementary to that, it's also the sort of um, automation and digitization of data itself. So for example, having auditable type of digital documents as opposed to having a report that gets manually updated throughout its life cycle by different individuals which may not even be completely logged and listed because it's about audit trail. And I think this is where on the one hand the FCA is sort of digitizing its own rule book and trying to sort of check rule book compliance with organizations, whilst organizations themselves have to actually start digitizing their own processes, their audit trail, and make sure that through the unstructured and structured data cleansing, you have complete lineage of anything you do, whether it's a regulatory report, whether it's just general credit management, counterparty risk management, across the different business silos. And I've seen a lot of very interesting solutions in the market that are already applied live with self-learning algorithms, natural language processing, with large institutions that are actually getting real traction and that mean that data can be cleansed in an ongoing way and then you can bolt on digital documentation solutions which exist 
lots of fintechs are minted throughout my life. And then on top of that, you can sort of add the cryptography piece to say, let's take out the data from the applications and make it travelable data that can actually journey around the globe with the right logic in it so that you can make sure you comply with data on drawing requirements, with GDPR, with data privacy, all at the same level because you can make sure that only a few individuals and specific functions can have access to it, can read it, can write over it and that means that you can automatically create a compliance environment where you don't need to have people on the ground in all countries but you can still do email screening as an example. And I think that is a fascinating piece of putting different fintech, regtech solutions that exist today with very interesting patents and patents pending together to create that sort of risk management uh, sort of nirvana, I would almost say. Thank you so much for your insights. In chapter three, actually, we're going to dive deeper into the data.